Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, the most significant Linux news of this week is the sudden and very unexpected death of the CentOS project. Now, if you are unaware of CentOS and where it's used for, it's not one I have done any real reviews or anything on on the channel. A lot of the reason is it's really more best designed as a server build. In fact, it is absolutely the most popular Linux distribution for web servers. So if we look at what makes the internet move and we say, yeah, there is a Windows server, but most servers are actually Linux. Well, the vastest majority of those Linux servers are actually running CentOS, particularly since the most popular web control management tool happens to be cPanel, and cPanel only runs on three distributions. CentOS, which is the most popular, for the same reason Linux is more popular than Windows servers, it is free. It also runs on Red Hat, and it runs on Cloud Linux. The latter two, of course, require monthly payments to keep running. So by killing CentOS, it definitely puts cPanel in a bad position. But we're going to go ahead and get to that in a bit because that is actually where I'm going to spend the majority of my discussion. But let's go ahead and see what is happening first and foremost. So they announced this on Tuesday, December 8th. The future of CentOS project is CentOS Stream. And over the next year, we'll be shifting focus from CentOS Linux, the rebuild of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, to CentOS Stream, which just tracks just ahead of the current Red Hat release. CentOS Linux 8 will be a rebuild of Red Hat 8, will end now in December of 2021. This is significant because this, this the, the biggest deal about CentOS is the long end of life because it is used for so many websites. And if you've never migrated a website from a server to a new version of the server, it is an atrocious mess. And so CentOS has always had about a 10 year life cycle. So a lot of people just recently converted of their time over into moving to CentOS 8, which was supposed to be good until I, I think it's December, any kind, 2029. They literally changed that from a 2029 end of life to a 2021 end of life, making it only one year further. Major change. And then what they're doing is now they have CentOS Stream, which is basically, it's Basically, it's the, the unstable Debian of the Red Hat enterprise. So we're basically losing the best long-term free Linux web server. Think of the implications of that. Now, with the proliferation of cloud server technologies, of course, AWS is popular. I have uh, affiliates through Linode you can use. These give you the option of CentOS or other options as well. You can go ahead and pick which type of distribution you want. But it does put a lot of the internet into a really crazy tight crunch. So if you are paying anything for websites, you might expect to be budgeting a little extra money in 2021 just to make sure everything is running properly. We're going to continue on here from the CentOS blog. Meanwhile, we understand many of you are deeply invested in CentOS 7. They will continue the CentOS 7 lifecycle until the end of 2024. So if you are still on CentOS 7, or in my case, one of my big servers is CentOS 6, I'm going to roll it up to CentOS 7 and give myself four years to decide where I want to move next. But there's going to be some options we're going to get to in a bit here. So CentOS Stream will be the centerpiece of the major shift in collaboration among CentOS special interest groups. Great, it's always the special interest groups that ensure this uh, special interest groups are developing and testing against what becomes the next version of Red Hat. Also provides special interest groups a clear single goal rather than have to build and test for two releases. It gives the CentOS contributor community a great deal of influence over the future of Red Hat. By the way, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that Fedora is basically an open source branch of Red Hat. Just use that one. It's already there. Anyway, but who knows? Maybe there was a big corporate money interest. I mean, if you think of it this way, who just bought Red Hat not long ago? 
IBM. IBM now looks down and says there's all of these CentOS applications, which basically is a free version of uh, of Red Hat going, we're not getting many money on any of these guys. Let's move things around so that we possibly can. Um, it doesn't take too bright of a tinfoil hat to see that that is a possible, a possible influence here. So maybe IBM buying Red Hat is what possibly could have accelerated this. Definitely interest. Uh, interesting. So when CentOS Linux 8 ends, your best option will be to migrate to CentOS Stream 8, which is a small delta from CentOS uh, Linux 8 and has regular updates like traditional CentOS Linux releases. If you're using CentOS Linux 8 in production environment and are concerned that the stream will not meet your needs, we encourage you to contact Red Hat about options. Dish out a little more nutties. Dish out a little more monies. And that's what can happen when big companies buy these excellent Linux projects. So we do have some commentary from Red Hat as well. CentOS Stream, building an innovative future for enterprise Linux, an unstable one. Just reach out to us for payment options to having a more stable. And I hear some of the comments, oh, you just don't want to pay for stuff. That's not really the point I'm getting at. You know, I'm not opposed to paying for a good service, but the problem is, as I'm running a company, I cannot be nickel and dimed to death on everything because my company will not be able to succeed. I, in my companies, like the publishing company is the latest one I just pushed out. In my publishing company is all a built on a backbone of free and open source software because we are trying to give our authors, the people we're working with, the highest royalty revenues possible. And I can't do that if I'm turning around and giving big monthly subscription fees to people for basic server tax. And yeah, I get that these people do need to get paid for their work as well. And there are excellent revenue streams for that. Uh, but the point I want to make here is that the CentOS team has been doing a very good job of this for a long time. And it seems as though this is something pushed down from Red Hat, maybe pushed down from the IBM corporate overlords who are looking at the number of people losing services without giving them a percentage of the money. Definitely an interesting thought. As I said, that is, uh, maybe I should be wearing my tinfoil hat with a little conspiracy end to it there. So they did announce this in 2019, but all of a sudden this big old announcement showed up. How sudden was it? Well, it was no, so sudden that like, nobody knew about it. Literally nobody knew about it. So I actually reached out to my hosting company. Of course, I have um, a lot of my clients are on A2 Hosting, uh, which is an excellent company. I reached out to them uh, as soon as I heard about this, and I asked them, uh, let's see if I have a copy of the actual question I asked down here. I don't. Okay, basically I said, hey, with the CentOS changing, uh, how is this going to change the VPSs, which all the VPSs running cPanel are all CentOS servers on A2. And so he says, we partner closely with cPanel to support OS's long term, which indeed had benefit to us and you partnering with cPanel and with us and including four questions such as these. In short, all told, our top recommendation is since we uh, we do see you're currently using CentOS 6. Um, which is out of date by now. Um, there's a reason I'm still using it. Um, they say migrate to CentOS 7 in, as soon as you realistically can, which I already have the um, I already have the the stream in place to do that. So that's when I told them, yeah, we're, we're already working on that. But regarding what this, as for CentOS stream specifically, it is further off. For example, before that, CentOS 7 will still be supported through 2024. That's actually where I'm going to be going. I'm going to go to CentOS 7 for a period of time while I work on a longer term plan. Since uh, it's relatively far off, more details from the cPanel vendor are still yet to come. Thus, for more information on the CentOS stream, both you and we are already are. We need to stay tuned from the official sources, such as cPanel, which... Yeah, they were completely thrown off as well. Uh, so I went over and had a look at uh, the cPanel forums. And uh, this guy starts out here uh, and he says, I expect the cPanel folks have not had an immediate or even 
uh, within a month answer. I imagine you're as caught off guard as we are um, basically surrounding this. So here is there the staff member for cPanel comes in. Yeah, announcement's it's pretty great, huh? I don't have anything yet. We didn't get any additional notice on their end. So literally cPanel, which only runs on three Linux distributions, CentOS, Cloud Linux, and Red Hat. That's it. So now, killing off CentOS, you have the Cloud Linux option at 14 a month or the Red Hat. This is a significant cost to small businesses attempting to run technology um, if you want to run something like cPanel. Now, it's not altogether bad because out of the ashes of something like this, opportunity actually comes. And uh, with that, the official um, announcement from cPanel came out, and it's actually encouraging. Um, so this is where cPanel has gone. Of course, cPanel already jacked up my rates for licensure this year. I already took a massive hit, and I did not raise any of my customers' um, prices uh, as of yet. But if this causes me to go up in prices again, I'm unfortunately going to have to. So it says... Um, accelerated end of life for CentOS 8. No further operating system updates will be available after December 30th, 2021. It's only one year away. CentOS 8 will be transformed into an upstream development branch of Red Hat called CentOS Stream. Previously, CentOS versions will remain part of the stable branch, means CentOS 8 should not be considered for use in production environments. CentOS 7 lifecycle will remain unchanged as of this writing, with additional updates and security patches continuing until June of 2024, though this timeline could potentially change in the future. Great, which start means pack your parachute now, folks. We might need to jump. This is actually why I'm right now experimenting with ISP config on a Debian server. Debian generally does not do crap like this. cPanel support for CentOS 8 and more. So following the above, these are the accelerated investments they're doing. They're accelerating cPanel support onto Ubuntu LTS. Ooh, that'll be look neat. Expected to deliver production ready versions as of late 2021. So if you don't want to use the Red Hat, then you will have the Ubuntu option. Remember the Ubuntu option is good. I think Red Hat might do this as well. I'm just not as as well versed in the you know in just the the individual partnering with servers. But if I remember correctly, I think Ubuntu, you can use it for free and you can purchase the extended support. I think Red Hat might be the same, but I thought Red Hat required you to purchase the extra support. If you know for sure one way or the other, and I know some of you do, please let me know in the comments down there um, just so that I can have the best clarified information. But the fact that it will be avail available on an Ubuntu LTS is actually very encouraging. So that is actually good. Although the Ubuntu LTS do not quite have the longevity as a CentOS server does, but that is what it is. Um, they will continue developments on cPanel to support CentOS 8. When it does reach end of life, you can transition your CentOS deployment to get updates from third parties that will extend the life through 2029. Uh, that may or may not be recommended. We've made a commitment to support Red Hat Fork by Cloud Linux. Uh, there's going to be more information about that, and we expect to continue supporting CentOS 7 through its life cycle until June of 2024. So that's actually what I'm going to be doing, uh, is I'm going to be running on 2024, and then by then I'll decide if ISP config or some of the other server technologies out there might be better options. Um, you know, I'd, be, I'd like to be able to switch to something that is more open source and be able to decrease what my clients are paying. That would be cool. Uh, we'll see what other options are. Additionally, we will support Cloud Linux OS 8. The additional commercially supported operating system provides an upgrade path for customers with Cloud Linux 6 or 7. That would be good. There is no upgrade path. I am literally going to have to manually transfer all of my sites from CentOS 6 to CentOS 7. It's going to be a pain. Um, but I don't think I could have an alternative viable solution up in there. And A2 hosting will actually help me transfer that. So I'm actually going to work half with them and half on my own to transfer um, transfer the sites over when I'm time ready to do that. That's one of the reasons I love A2. 
All right, so we'll uh, continue to, uh, let's see, we're committed to supporting you, your business, and your customers as we reach critical delivery milestones and in our support cPanel on CentOS 8, Cloud Linux 8, and Ubuntu LTS. Stay tuned. So there we have it from cPanel. Now, before we jump off on this video, though, we do want to look at one more thing, and that is out of the dust and ashes also rises another phoenix, and that is Rocky Linux. Maybe starting because of Rocky's start. Uh, but this is actually some of the OS um, governing board. So OS governing board made a surprise announcement. Um, as informed by Red Hat team, shifting its full focus from current CentOS to its future stream, a development branch, and basically no longer be there. So what is going to happen is the project founders of CentOS, Gary uh, Kurtzer, not in favor of the decision, just a day after the news, he has initiated and led a new alternative project called Rocky Linux, among with other team development. So we have information down here, how to get a hold of everybody. So as the project lead, there are, um, uh, I'll, I'll try and pronounce these guys, give them all credit here, Neil Hanlon, um, Taylor Goodwill, R. Lay Henning, Luis Abel, Rob Fesberg, Jordan Pesnelio, Hayden Young, Lee Henning again, and Lewis Abel again. These guys are all working on the development of Rocky Linux. So maybe if Rocky Linux comes out, they say it will be a 100% bug for bug compatible with Red Hat Linux. And maybe this is something that replaces CentOS and cPanel will start supporting this one as well. And so it's definitely interesting to see what's going to come on with this. So you can head on over to the uh, rockylinux.org is where their website is. They got a nice little logo there. And uh, this is going to be a, uh, a future project to keep an eye on as a possible replacement for CentOS. So as CentOS is laid to rest, there could possibly be some money factors that Keep, played a key role into this decision. We also could possibly be seeing um, an attempt at IBM and or Red Hat to try and get a little bit more of the market share. But out of the ashes, it looks like we are finally going to get cPanel support on Ubuntu. That would be cool. And we will also have this new Rocky Linux and we'll see if, uh, if it can get up and moving as well. So it is not the end of the world, but it is a critical thing and it will cause a kind of a rocky 2021 as we start shifting servers around over the next few years, moving things around from CentOS to Ubuntu's and to Debian's and to, to other server systems as well. So there is, as of now, the information I was able to uh, gather up and compile about this CentOS being laid to rest and the opportunities and challenges that that will bring with it. So thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget, you can, uh, I, I did mention here Linode and uh, A2 hosting. I have affiliate links for both of these. I'll put those in the description of this video if you're looking to play around with some server technology and stuff. CentOS 7, again, is going to be supported until 2024, and there's other server options available on each of those as well. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.